on the yeah, year with Lugia too. Exactly. So is that the statement for this for this year here, Pablo? Do it in style. Do it with Lugia. Let's look at these prize cards. See if there's anything super relevant. There is an Archeops in the prizes. That's of course why you play the maximum four copies. One piece for each of these players on that Chinchino line, but nothing looks too powerful. Nothing looks too important. I think we're gonna have a good set here, Pablo. Yeah, the bosses orders are also inaccessible places as well. Perhaps if we go into a single price trade-off, that third Cinchino being prized for Zane could come into play. But other than that, as you mentioned, nothing super, super relevant. Maybe the Archibs could make it a little bit different, but I think we're getting this started. Let's see who is going to be the Lugia winner as Zane starts us off here. Let's get action kicked off. Zane. Going first in the Lugia Mirror, a big advantage. It's, of course, going to come down to, can it get that turn to Summoning Star? Uh, there is going to be that V-Guard attachment. Now, that can protect against some math. For example, if your Lugia V does not evolve, it will protect it from an opposing Tempest Dive. Uh, we're going to start flipping. Expect to see a lot of coin flips through this series. And it does flip a Tails. You always really want to see those heads early on in the game because, of course, the name of the game, get those Archeops, put them in the discard pile, put him into play with that summoning star, V-star power. Unless you get, go grab Luminion, get that Jack supporter, mm. and combine that with an Ultra Ball, and all of a sudden, you're fully set off. We lost Professor Burnett to their rotation, but Jack ha is here to replace her. So it'll be interesting to see what Zane chooses. I couldn't take a look at what else he has in his hand. He has that pretty concealed from my view. But yeah, as you mentioned, as a Lugia player, you have one goal on turn one. Get a Lugia down and get as many Archeopses in the discard as possible. Yeah. That's sometimes very tough to do on turn one, but turn two, it's for a game. The coveted Ultra Ball double Archeops. Mm -hmm. Definitely a lot harder to do now than when Lugia first came out, but it is still possible. I'm sure these players would be loving to see that now of all times here in the top four of the regional championships, the last one of the year, who will be our regional champion. And now the question, do you ever put this other Lugia down? I'm not sure I love putting Lugia down in this spot. There's really no reason to, especially if you don't know what your opponent's got cooking, but it is going to be benched. What do you feel about that here, Pop? I, yeah, as you mentioned, I'm not a big fan. There's nothing that really threatens you. I mean, if you have two Lugia V-Stars in your hand, then maybe there's mm. justification, right? Um, if Zane has identified that he prized Ace in Chino and is possibly trying to eye off Lugia V-Star as an attacker. Maybe his hand is so bad that he knows he's already going to go read the win next turn, but then if you get IO node, right, yes, you lose the Lugia, but then you get a fresh new hand, which possibly leads to the Archives being able to be discarded. So Brandon playing his own capturing aroma, he will flip head, so can search out for any evolution Pokemon he so chooses to. Immediately, Archeops, a prime selection for this first turn. Just checking to make sure there are multiple Archeops in the hand, multiple Archeops uh, that can be put there via the searching cards that Brandon does play. It's all going to be about setup. It's all going to be about getting these Archeops discarded on these early turns. Now, let's talk about the differences between these two lists, because on paper they look very similar, but there are a few subtle differences that could give the edge to one player or the other. Sane not choosing to play the Snorlax, in his deck list, which is a pretty good, decent one uh, one prize attacker. And now the A spec. Zane is playing that consistency master ball A spec, whereas Brandon is playing that uh, prime catcher that we saw come in so clutch in his previously streamed game. Consistency versus aggression. It's going to be a theme to really watch throughout this set. So Brandon is just finishing up his deck search, making sure he understands what cards are available. It's actually going to be the Lugia V-Star taken off of this capturing aroma. Is there a Jock in hand? There is a Jock does not even need to use Luminion, just opening that one copy in the hand. And okay, Pablo, with these two Arceus being grabbed, there is an Ultra Ball, the fabled turn one. Ultra Ball away, double Archeops. If you're Zane here, you've got to be maybe wincing a little bit, looking back, saying, yeah, this is really not what I want to see even though my opponent's going second, my start really matches in no way in comparison to what Brandon has been able to do on this first turn. There's no Luminion in play even to do this. Has the Minchino in the active spot, even has the Lukia. We could be seeing a whole bunch of options at this point. 
And even Brandon not immediately grabbing Lugia V means that he can actually just grab any other Pokemon he wants or use that call for family attack. So that shows that Brandon has options to work with the following turn. Yeah, I think that Sinchino pretty much signifies that Brandon might already have the Lugia V star in his hand and he'll be able to call for family for the Lugia V. I can't quite take a look. Both players concealing their cards. But yeah, off to the races for Brandon. Picture perfect start that we've talked about. But can Sane keep up? Because currently there are zero Arcubes in his discard pile. And it is slightly risky to only get one Lugia V here because there is a world where you could get knocked out this turn. If your opponent's holding on to a few Archeops in hand and then has like Ultra Ball plus either Luminion or Boss or Lugia V Star, then that would be able to knock out your solo Lugia. It's a risk I feel like is worth taking, especially when your opponent hasn't showed much, but it is something that you've got to maybe sort of hiding a little bit, saying, all right, please don't have the absolute crazy combination here. Please just don't do anything with this deck. Maybe read the win, take some time for yourself. I'll come in and I'll clean up your Lugia for you. Don't worry about that. Yeah, and it, the game of Pokemon is all about those calculated risks, right? You have to determine whether it's viable, whether it's not viable. We do see the Luminion hit the field. Now probably going to find, uh, ideally would love to do the same thing. Jack into Ultra Ball, into establish your Lugia V star. You don't get to boss the Lugia V, but you get fully set up. However, seems like Zane was eyeing off the Iono. So it might just be the starting hand for both players that really determines who gets an advantage this time around. That is not what you want to see. And definitely a sigh of relief for Brandon. You get your hand refreshed. You know that there's a very low percentage that Zane will be the one to take the first prize card in this matchup. Doesn't have any Archeops in the discard pile so far. We'll just be seeing six cards. All of those cards in Zane's hand will go to the bottom of the deck. He's gonna need to, Zane is going to have to find a very solid six cards here. At minimum, at least one Archeops to read the wind away this turn. Otherwise, even as it stands right now, with just one Minchino in play, if there's the potential for Brandon to just start chasing after Minchino throughout the game. This is really where it becomes interesting. Do you go after the prize cards or do you go after the main attacker? It's really going to come down to what Brandon has in hand and what he feels like is a better chance for winning this first game. Yeah, but Brandon only needing one Lugia Vista, right? Which he has three copies of or the Ultra Balls or even the Capturing Aromas potentially, whereas Zane needs so much more. We're going to see this Great Ball, see if that can even find an Archeops, what else is in the hand. But I mean, now... Of course, this extra Lugia V getting benched is pretty good for Zane. He definitely had the foresight to do that in the previous turn. Let's see what the Great Ball finds here, Ethan. And he's really thinking about it here. I'm not sure there's a great target to take. It looks like considering maybe a Lugia V star to go to the hand to allow yourself to use that summoning star on the following turn. All right, seems like the Pokemon has been chosen. It is that Lugia V star, I believe. Yeah, it seems to be the Lugia V star, mm -hmm. but is there no Archeops for you to use Reek the Wind here? That's so rough. Oh, there's an Ultra Ball in the hand. Would have loved to find Archeops to discard, and it looks like there is none. That's definitely the first card you just slam down. I mean, Technical Machine Devolution, another card you definitely slam down in this matchup. It's not going to have any use. Yeah, but Gift Energy being gone is also a pretty important resource, right, for those late game Iono protections. Technical Machine Devolution, not a card that's going to be relevant at all, probably, in this matchup. There is a universe where you hit your opponent's Lugia for 220 damage, hit the other one, and then TMD one, you get four prizes over the course of three turns. But realistically, it's still going to happen too, too often. TM Devo, more of a tech card against Charizard and against other decks, for sure. I'm sure Sane has found a lot of use throughout the tournament for it, but... So far, we're just going to see a uh, read the wind, and you're barely keeping up with your opponent at this point, who is almost ready to go and is about to take their first two prizes if they can find Lugia Vistar and Sinchino. Or even a boss's orders here to just have that as an access. You can take out the Lugia, and since you have doubled Minchino on board, you're more than okay to start the two prize trade, even if your opponent can respond back. It just comes down to how many gusting cards you can play. That V Guard coming in a little bit clutch here. As we'll see, read the wind, discard the Archeops, draw three cards, and immediately has the Lugia V start in the hand. Doesn't even need to search for it. And it will now come down to what other cards Brandon has in hand. Could even just evolve this Minchino into Chinchino. And then from there, the V Guard energy is ignored, and you can take this first knockout and do it with a one prize Pokemon. Setting up those Archeops, not having played in Supporter yet. I mean, taking down the, the Minchino would be pretty good. I think. Taking the first two prizes is just the way to go here for 
Brandon, whenever you trade a single price Pokemon such as Inchino into a two price Pokemon, you know you're coming out ahead. So really off the races here for Brandon. We're going to see an Ultra Wall getting rid of the Iono. So we could see the Sinchino getting set up and the boss's orders play, perhaps? Well, then begs the question here, Pablo, do you just go after the Minchino and make sure that you're not being threatened? Maybe this makes sense if you can re-pivot into that Arlugia V-Star. That yeah. way you can just protect your Chinchino for when later on another two prize Pokemon comes up that you want to knock out. Yeah, no. All right, seems like we're just going to go on the aggressive for Brandon, take these first two prize cards. Not going to use Iono to disrupt your opponent, unless he already has another Iono, but as mentioned, both players keeping their hands very well concealed from each other and also from us, the casters. They love making our job hard, Pablo. <laughs> I know they're thinking, wow, we wouldn't it be funny if the casters had a harder had job no guessing no idea what I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to love this one. So we'll see the Primal Turbo number two be used. Thinking about what special energies are worth putting down. And I like this play. You know yeah. that Minchino is going to be your main Pokemon you want to get powered up. Eventually evolve that into Chinchino. And we're going to be seeing a turn one knockout. This does signal there's probably an energy card in the hand. Special roll on turn two. 280 damage. This is what you dream of, especially in a high stakes situation like top four. Yep. The only card that would make this setup better would just be another Sinchino right here. But perfect start for Brandon. Fully max rarity as well it seems so can't ask for much more yeah and just not playing a supporter card that turn just yeah discarding the iono maybe just has other supporters like boss to hold on to for the following turn and knows that zane is pretty pipelined into either playing something like you mentioned the chalk to find those archaeops or something like professor's research to discard that so i actually kind of like this play here for brandon you're never forced to play a supporter card so just play a little bit conservatively. And the, the clock is kick ticking now here for Zane. Zane needs to find a response now got this turn. Otherwise, Chinchino is just going to roll out of control and use that special roll to just knock out every Pokemon Zane has in play. And the prize lead is going to become unsurmountable. Now, Zane doesn't even have access to something like Snorlax to potentially return KO this Chinchino and not give up another two prizes. So does Zane give up on his one option for Sinchino as it currently stands, or does he use Lugia to take down the Sinchino, but then open himself up for a retaliation KO with the next Sinchino and allow Brandon to be up four prizes to one? Neither scenario seems good for Zane, and that going first advantage seems to have completely gone away from Zane at this point. Does finally flip heads on capturing Aroma, so that can find either the Lugia V Star or another Archaeops to get that second Archaeops in the discard pile. But you've got to wonder, it feels like with this board, Brandon is the one who went first in this spot and has taken the first knockout, and that is really what this matchup comes down to. It's really just asking yourself, if you're Zane, sure, I could find everything I want this turn. I could find Lugia V-Star, double Archaeops, another Minchino to put into play, but how do I ever win the prize trade back from this point if my opponent can just continue to streamline Minchinos, Chinchinos, and then attack with Lugia V-Star where it seems fit? And Chinchino is really what gave Lugia V-Star new life, right? Yeah. Lugia V-Star had been pretty relegated to being a meh deck. It didn't really have the attacks. It had to resort to playing Earth and Vessel and Basic Energy, which go against <laughs> uh, the Archeops philosophy, if you will. But Sinchino came back, or came into the fray, allowed Lugia to come back. It might even get stronger with the new set, but we are seeing it be strong as a very good meta call this tournament. And I think Brandon is showing us why. Zane's struggling a little bit to get the full, full setup, the full value of that summoning star. We might even see a single Archeops hit the board here. That just feels so devastating if you have to go for it, but you've got to figure out the best way to keep yourself in this game. There's not even something like another Chinchino to bring yeah. back, and it's just going to be the single Archeops, but even if you take a knockout onto this Lugia, a Lugia V-Star of Brandon's own to just boss his orders and target up that Archeops means that there is going to be little to no response to Zane in terms of getting attacker streamlined for the rest of the game. So here we go, single Archeops, but with how things stand right now, the only way Zane can attack is if he doesn't have an energy card in his hand is to put two double turbo energy onto this Lugia V-Star, which yes, it will be enough to knock out Chinchino, but down the line, it's just not gonna be a great option in terms of making sure you have things like Gift Energy on there, things like V-Guard Energy. This is going to be a very, very tough situation. Very, very rough indeed. I do think I see one Energy in hand. There is also a Boss's Orders to maybe match 
the fact that you have one Arceops and try to take down your opponent's Arceops, but Brandon already has a huge energy advantage. Four energy here, two energy here, versus your measly four, three energy and one energy. So yeah. you really will never be able to keep up at that point. Yeah, you would not only be losing the prize trade, but you would be losing the Archeops trade with just having one in play. And from there, Lugia V-Star, or rather Chinchino, isn't as intimidating when every turn you can throw four energy cards onto it. So with this combination of factors, just everything seeming to be going wrong here for Zane. There's the attachment for turn. We will see Chinchino go down, and Brandon will also get to draw a few cards here if his hand is not filled up already because of that gift energy attached to it. I think your best hope here is for Brandon to whiff the Sanchino at this point in time to get the return KO on mm -hmm. this Lugia. I really don't see any other line, but Brandon's going to get three extra cards from the Gift Energy activation before he even needs to consider who he brings up. And the Ionu discard last turn probably indicates that Brandon's hand is actually quite good. Yeah, I think I would honestly just be okay targeting solo Archeops here. I feel yeah. like that's probably just even a better play than knocking this out because there's a world where... Just having one Archeops, you eventually do not have a Chinchino response, right? A Lugia V-Star comes up again, it knocks us out, and then you get into a weird trading game. I think this is just... I think it's... Uh, honestly, Pablo, it's a win-win. You're a win -win, in a win-win exactly. situation. You knock yeah. this out, you go down to two prize cards, and then from there, Luminion on the board is an easy prime target for those final two prizes. Yeah, with three bosses orders, a copy of Serena, and the prime catcher, even if you get Iodo to two, you're probably bound to find one copy. Does have that Sinchino backup. So I think just going two to two straightforward, no need to be fancy, take down the Archeops, leave energy on the board, then the Sinchino possibly goes down and it could get a little awkward. You extend mm -hmm. the time it takes for you to win. I like just going 2-2-2. Two, two, two. You have to gift energy to protect from Iono. You know there's not going to be any sort of Temple of Sinnoh. Uh, Enhanced Hammer isn't even legal yet, so <laughs> yep. nothing stopping you from drawing extra cards. And you're also thinning the deck by four cards right here, possibly even more. Um, so finding one of your five ghosting effects feels really reliable off of seven plus seven from the gift plus your top deck. And you have Luminion as well. Yep, you still got the fish, you still got Luminion. Ultra Wolf. <laughs> so many Everything. options. Everything. Yeah, if this was not 75 minutes, I think Zane is maybe considering probably picking things up at this point. But you got to play out the opportunities. That's what the extra 25 minutes in this top cut grants these players. So we'll see Chinchino fully powered up. And from here, it's going to get very tough. Brandon's going to take a huge prize lead, especially if this Chinchino is the next Pokemon to get dealt with. And yes, Collapse Stadium is still a card you've got to think about. There are ways for this, or a way for Luminion to be removed from the board. Of course, allowing both players, or forcing them rather, to discard until they have four bench Pokemon left if they do not already have four bench Pokemon or are filled up at five. So we'll see exactly what happens here. Chinchino, Prime to take this knockout, and we're going to see the attachment for turn onto the Lugia V-Star as well, meaning no matter what happens, next turn, a single Primal Turbo will power this Lugia V-Star up. Brennan not playing any supporter cards, not playing anything else out, is content with what is in the hand at the moment and can use special roll to take another two prize turn. Special roll taking two prizes. Gonna draw four cards from the gift energy, potentially finding that collapse stadium, right? Zane would love to bench on our Pokemon, collapse stadium this away, evolve the Luya, and then maybe he stops Brandon from winning next turn, but he's still gonna be a little far behind and with only one Archeops, it's really hard to keep up with the attach, uh, with the energy in play to be able to even knock out the Lugia could be a little troublesome. Zane's got his back against the wall. He knows what he has to do to pull this out. That's the start. That's Deal with this one. Chinchino. You're going to need manual attachment. But even then, you need another. But the problem also is you need a two prize Pokemon or a Pokemon that's not a two prize Pokemon to fill this last bench yeah. slot because sure, you could put another Pokemon down and remove Luminion, but. Having Lugia V is essentially just the same thing at this point. There yeah, isn't a, yeah, and that's not what you want to see off this. You have all the evolutions you want. Still, Pablo, I'm not sure an extra basic here really makes a huge difference, unless you have that Collapse Stadium. Yeah, there's exactly one Pokemon that can fill up that bench spot. It's Minchino, because there are there is another copy, or another basic Pokemon in uh, Luminion, or the, no, sorry, the Mew EX, but that's it, right? So... Even if you have the Collapse Stadium, it's not easy to play. It was a head slip for the Archeops. I don't even know if it's in the hand, but it's not looking good for Sane in this game one of the top four match. Got to play to your outs. You got to play what you've got. 
There's already eight cards in hand for Brandon, so there's really no play point to play Iono. It's just gonna cycle those cards to the bottom unless you have information that Brandon's holding on to anything, but he hasn't given any information at this point. So we'll see the double turbo, the choice of the first energy, and then any other energy that provides colorless, the gift energy really doesn't matter in this spot. If the Luigi is knocked out, refilling your hand doesn't matter. The game will be over. Now, there's no way for Brandon to take down the Lugia in this upcoming turn. There wasn't another Sinchino benched, or Mincino benched, rather. But Brandon hasn't played a supporter for two turns, did get to replenish the hand, does have so many costing options. I would put money on the fact that there is a boss disorder or some costing effect awaiting in Brandon's hand to be able to take a knockout and close out the game. Well, there's a Master World that can get the Mincino, but the Collapse Stadium. Both players do play a copy of that, but finding your one copy is not exactly easy with no direct way to search for it. Nope, not easy at all. You see Zane just debating. Does the Mew EX do anything for me? Does it really make any changes? No, it doesn't. No, really, it's not gonna be a huge game changer, it feels like, in this matchup. And maybe Zane just kind of accepting that the odds of finding this Collapse Stadium are so low, but will still give himself a chance, find this Mincino, put it down, and Zane's gonna have to maybe play some sort of supporter card. Iona would not be terrible, of course. Brandon's still gonna end a turn off with one less card than he has in hand now. It's pretty much the same thing. And does have the oh, Collapse wow. Stadium. already had it. Okay. okay, so Zane making sure he's gonna make it as difficult as possible for Brandon to win this match. Now, Brandon can try to two hit kill this Lugia. I think like the conditions now change to the fact that it's gonna take an extra turn for Brandon to win, right? Oh, we do see an Aries, so. There were plenty of bosses orders in the hand. Not a single item card, however. So, Ares, just take a look at your hand, and that's it. And this is where the issue comes in is, yes, there's no immediate way to win the game this turn, but I think this is the turn now where you just play a boss's orders on the Archeops, knock it out, and then next turn, there's no threat of a special roll. Or you target the one that has the gift energy, since an attachment plus primal turbo does not get you there. Especially yeah. since there's a risk that there's always a chance that Zane plays something like another Collapse Stadium in his deck and maybe does play Snorlax. There's a world where you can just have two of your turns essentially fully negated and Zane could come back into this game. Yeah, you are completely right. So perhaps going after the bench, there is the Mincino uh, seeing play. However, there's the Archeops coming into the active spot. There's not going to be any extra energies for Zane at this point in time. And... Without the Archeops backup, that special roll is not so special. <laughs> not special at all. It's like a normal roll at this point. It's normal roll, yeah, Me exactly. Mediocre roll. <laughs> mediocre roll. <laughs> sufficient roll. <laughs> not even sufficient, I don't <laughs> think. <laughs> We're just dunking on Cinchino. What did Cinchino ever do to us, Pablo? No, no, Cinchino is great when its body Archeops is also there. But at this point in time, I mean, Sane can potentially Iono. He sees that Brandon has the other boss already in his hand. So unless mm -hmm. he can Iono... Um, the game's essentially over. There's nothing that can one kill this Lugia at this point in time. You can't even trap any of the bench Pokemon because uh, there's just so many energies. This Lugia deck plays 16 or 17 energy on average as we see two of them get attached to the Mencino. So Brennan in full control being now two turns away, including this one, to close out game one. Didn't think a Lugia v mirror match could take this long necessarily for a first game. I thought it would just be boom, 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 knockout yep. back and forth. But it can be very in-depth, especially when a player misses a step, like not getting out the double Archeops in this case. A huge advantage, though, for Bren in this game. Let's not get that wrong. He's going to commit this missed energy. I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of doing that in this spot. You want to make sure you do have energy to pivot out of the active spot, but if there's still an energy left in the deck, then I think this is okay here for Brandon. But you've always got to look at your lose conditions, and yep. one of those could be double boss's orders, keep this Lugia up in the active spot, and force you to find a way to pivot out eventually. You are completely right. You not only have to factor how you win, but you also have to factor into your decision-making and resource management how your opponent could possibly win as well. Now, Saying in a lose-lose situation, if he goes boss, KO the Mincino to protect the Lugia, then he's going to be in trouble. If he goes for the Iono, then that Mincino can evolve and potentially just knock out the Lugia V-Star with one more energy available. And there's not going to be the activation of the Gift Energy. Brandon's going to be drawing only a single card, but Brandon is under no pressure. Zane's still at four prizes. It's not like the Lugia, if that goes down, Zane wins the game. Zane still needs to find 
four prizes, two on the Lugia, and then two more on the single prize Pokemon on the bench. Saint's going to need a miracle to pull this one off. No Archeops in play. These are important, though. Slowly getting manual attachments onto the Chinchino means, hey, eventually you could just get a one-hit knockout on a Pokemon, especially if you need to pivot out of this Lugia V-Star on the following turn. So there is still some life here for Zane, but let's see what ha happens here. Brandon will draw his card for turn. Does he have a boss's orders? No, there's a capturing aroma, though. So if this tails. flips tails, this could find Luminion. But no, no it flips <laughs> heads. And now the question is, do you even grab any Pokemon here off of this capturing aroma? Especially if you're looking to get gift energy, but this is actually just going to be the game here yep. because it was a win-win either way. You grab the Chinchino, and if there's enough special energies here, but I actually don't know if there's... Oh, there is one. Okay, yep. never mind. Three energies already on there. Brandon saying, look, if I flip heads, I win. If I flip tails, I win. Which one would you like to call? Doesn't <laughs> matter. I'm winning game one. Yeah, at this point, it felt like Zane was trying to do everything in his power to slow down Brandon from winning, right? It just make it as difficult as possible for him to win. But in the end, he was too far behind. Only a single Archeops, not enough powerful attackers, not enough energy in play. And now you have to wonder, Sane won the coin flip or potentially chose to go first. We'll find out. But do you choose to go first or second? Going first didn't really work out in this game one. I feel like you've still got to just hope you high roll in this mirror match because if you don't go first and you're, you, let, you let Brandon go first and he does exactly what he did on turn two instead of turn one, it's the same situation except he is not only still having a super solid setup, but he's also putting on the first aggression, taking the first prize cards. Everything went right for Brandon this game. Everything went wrong for Zane this game. It is Lugia we're talking about, so the wind can change very quickly. We'll see how things play out. I mean, I'm pretty sure Brandon only played two supporters that game. One Jack on turn one and one boss's orders to take down the Archeops eventually. He didn't play any research. He didn't play any Iono. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure he got iono by Zane into the Lugia V-Star after the perfect start with the Jack in hand. And that was it. Yeah, he just found everything he needed off of Capture and Roma, off of Ultra Balls. Who needs supporters, right? Just Jack. Just play for Jack and your Lugia. <laughs> That's why Lukia is so good. Its board just stabilizes itself. Yeah. You don't need to dig through your deck and find attachments for turn. You don't have to use anything else besides your primal turbo abilities. So as soon as you put in all the hard work early on, you can kind of sit back, relax a little bit, and just be okay to swing away with your powerful attackers. Now, of course, you have that fragile setup with your Arceus, but if you have enough threats on the board, your opponent cannot keep up with that then you're gonna run away with the game and that's exactly what happened here for Brandon. Having one more Archeops is just too much of an advantage when you're playing the mirror match. So can Zane keep up in this game? Both players have basically the same deck. Uh, Zane's a little bit more teched out, does have an Arvin in there, does have that Master Ball, does have that Technical Machine Evolution. So a little bit of variation, but in the grand scheme of things, both decks are built the same and trying to accomplish the same. Three energy cards for both players and that Prime Catcher A spec in the prizes for Brandon. A few Ultra Ball there Pretty as much well mirror, for Zane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a, a two card If you count the boss two, and the Prime yeah, Catcher, it's two as jets, both gusting two gusting cards. One gusting effect, one Ultra Ball, one uh, Pokemon Search. Yeah, pretty much mirror prizes. Now, Brandon does start with the Snorlax in the active scene, starting with the Lugia. Can this Great Ball find something good to go with his hand? Ideally an Archeops for an Ultra Ball. Maybe, all right, Mancino is a good call, right? Depending on yep. what the rest of the hand looks like, that Mancino on turn one is pretty good. Does open up the possibility to have like the perfect setup. Boss KO your opponent's single Lugia, which he Brandon did take that uh, calculated risk last game. Yeah, and on the other side here for Brandon, starting Snorlax, it's sort of a double-edged sword. It's a Pokemon that you would be okay if Zane took a turn two knockout onto it. It's not the most important Pokemon to have down in this matchup, but uh, at the same time, you really want to either use it when it gets slammed down and is even thinking about getting rid of Mew EX. It's a big liability, but Restart can bail you out of some pretty tight situations if you need it to. Yeah, I'm guessing that hesitation was due to the fact that Brandon's hand might not be as good. Uh, Brandon does play three Professor's Research, does play two Iono, does play that Morty's Conviction, and that Serena. But after that harsh research, there's two Research, the Serena, and the Morty's Conviction left in terms of draw supporters. It's a big price to pay. 
So both players sort of off to shaky start so far. Only having one Archeops in the discard pile going second, and there's no Chet Energy, so no call for family action, no read the wind action. What do you have, Zane? What can you put together this turn? Are you able to do the Jock Ultra Ball combo? We know there's two Ultra Ball, though, in the prizes for Zane, so may have to really rely off of these supporter cards to discard Archeops from the hand, if he can even find these Archeops and put them into the hand in the first place. Oh, I'm sh pretty sure Zane does have an Iono in his hand because he just asked Brandon how many cards he had, but we're just going to see a read the win for a single Archeops, not wanting to give any help to Brandon. Another slow start for Zane. Does Brandon even have anything here in hand to work with? That's the question at this point. What do you even do? Your Snorlax is going to take at least two turns to power up if you want to commit energy cards to it. I mean, it could literally be a manual attachment war, but if you commit an energy to the Snorlax, it means a single attachment on this Lukia V next turn will knock it out. So things are getting very, very interesting. Thinking about putting this Luminion into play, there is one Archeops in the discard pile, so this could grab a plethora of supporter cards. We could see that Mori's Conviction, but it's going to be the Jock. So, okay, if there is a Lukia V-Star and Archeops selected here and a way to discard this Archeops, that we could see Summoning Star fill the bench up, but your bench is just looking really awkward from here on out. Pretty sure this is a Lugia V-Star gone this turn. And very interesting to not put a Jet Energy, instead wants to use another Gift Energy from this point on. I feel like having that resource could give you a little bit more flexibility around a card like Iono. Now you're stuck with just a single Gift Energy for the rest of this game since you've committed two to this active Chinchino. And that is the big question. Do we see boss's orders, or will it just be a knockout? We'll see the attachment for turn onto the Minchino. Come on, Brandon, show us. Do you got the boss? Do you have the Gusting card? He does have the boss, and that will bring up the Lugia V-Star to the active. Special roll now will put Brandon just two prize cards away from advancing into the finals here in Los Angeles. He's also about to grab the Prime Catcher from the prizes if he takes them in order, so... This Luminion could end up being very costly for Zane. There's the Prime Catcher grab from the prize cards. Two energy in the prize cards, but there should still be enough for Brandon to close out the game with Lugia. So can Zane disrupt Brandon's hand? And is it even worth it? Because there's a Gift Energy on the active and a Gift Energy on the Machino. So what can you really do at this point? You can't Ghost and Iono in the same turn. Yeah, and Zane honestly wants to take a two prize knockout this turn because yeah. if he just takes a one prize knockout, he goes down to three prizes and Brandon may not even need boss on this next turn. He can be content with taking a one prize knockout and then boss up not eat just the Luminion, but any of these one prize Pokemon in play. So this is where things are going to get tough. I'm sure Zane asking himself, was it worth it to play the Iona? Was it worth it to put Luminion into play? This could potentially cost him going to a third and final game. Yeah, Iona... When your opponent has Gift Energy on the active, you bring them down to four cards, and then they get an extra four, right? Three from the Gift, one from their top deck. You need to go boss, boss, so you needed the Luminion potentially to find one of those boss's orders to keep yourself that advantage. Things just not looking great for Sane in this second game of top four. And only one double Turbo Energy down, so that means if there are multiple in the deck, we know Brandon is playing three copies. Even just two double turbo energy will be enough for this Lugia V-Star to knock out the Luminion. Do we see a stadium card? Is there the Collapse Stadium? And the only disadvantage of that is you also discard your opponent's Luminion in play. <laughs> so it sort of acts as a neutral play. There's but that's a knockout. It. We're just going to see the knockout onto Chinchino. Brandon's going to play through everything, play the gift energy. And I think Brandon has all the cards he needs to hit punch his ticket into the finals. He's going to look through the deck, use this Primal Turbo to power up Archeops. Just need to make sure there's enough energy cards in the deck. Let's take a look through. There's two Jet Energy and There's a the double, double turbo. turbo. Brandon's got all the pieces. He'll yep. power up this Lugia V-Star, play that Prime Catcher Ace back, and punch his ticket into the final match with a powered up Lugia V-Star. Brandon Bond going the distance, and he will go into our final match. The advantage that Zane was able to have by being the aggressor was nullified by that. Luminion on the bench allowed Zane to go 2-2-2 two -two -two on the prize cards. His patience paying off allowing him to move on to the 